Okay. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Charles Alder from EcoForce Global. And today I want to share with you uh, an amazing gentleman who has come to be part of the EcoForce Global mission. I'm going to talk today with a wonderful gentleman from the Gold Coast, Christopher Power. Christopher, welcome to EcoForce Global and welcome to our chat. Uh, thanks, Charles. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So you're sitting on the Gold Coast, a nice sunny day. We're living in a beautiful country, Australia. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your background and, and um, what drives Christopher Power these days? Well, I'm down by the canals here. If any of you know the Gold Coast, you can see it. The sun's going down and it's a beautiful day here. Um, currently, I'm actually based in Thailand, but there's a bit of a story behind that because next month I turn 74. So okay. I've been around for a while, you know, three years after the Second World War, saw the Beatles live on stage, if anybody remembers who the Beatles is. Of course we were. do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've had an extraordinary life. Born in Melbourne, Australia, brought up in a big Catholic family, conservative Catholic, very successful. 20 years, I got to university and discovered that I actually had choice out of which subjects I studied. So I studied geology and geophysics for four years and then ran away to Byron Bay, which is a well-known surfing spot here in Australia. Ended up in a town called Nimbin that no one had ever heard of just <laughs> before the hippies turned up. And uh, my life as a trendsetter and someone on the cutting edge of things that are really happening in a positive way in the world started there. And I ended up teaching secondary and tertiary students, girls and boys, 11 years old to in their 20s, which was the 11 year olds were the best. <laughs> what an <laughs> incredible experience. I mean, dealing with 11 year old girls in a, in a convent school Wow. Yeah. You know, they they talk about having a lot of fun and um and challenges, but went beyond that, went looking to you know, like most of us did in the seventies and eighties, went looking to find myself, found a teacher who really showed me how to go within, mm -hmm. got involved very deeply with that for seven years until he told us to go get a life. <laughs> you know, I was in an, an ashram and he said, come on, guys. I mean, what I'm showing you is within you. It, it's not all this Indian stuff. Go get a real life. So I did. Right. And um, I went to find out more about myself, discovered numerology, reinvented it, discovered astrology, reinvented it, made it really practical and down to earth because, you know, I was came from a conservative background and I was a trained scientist and basically did that for 30, 40 years, uh, became a consultant in numerology, astrology, the Enneagram, the last 14 years in human design, uh, used them to teach golf people, create businesses, all sorts of wow. quite cutting edge stuff. Uh, crystal grids in mattresses for a company in the US. Um, lots of very innovative out there stuff, but I dealt with maybe 10,000 clients in my life or more, probably a lot more. Wow, what a diversity of experience you've had. Yeah, it's it was unusual and it was marrying the best of ancient wisdom with um, bringing it up to date, making it relatable to everyday people. Yep. and and then making and creating new techniques in it that had never been done before. Hold on, I'll move down. It'll <laughs> cut the sun out a bit. And um, that, I thought, was what my whole life's work was about. And I came back from the States in the early 2010s, yep. and around 2013, a friend of mine said, you've got to go to Thailand. Well, he'd been saying that to me for several years. And I said, why would I want to go to Thailand? And to make a long story short, five years later, I went. Okay. And loved it. And several things happened as a result of that. Okay. One, you never really know 
what getting outside the set, you know, there's an old saying in mathematics that you never understand a set until you get outside the set. Yep. Well, I'd, I'd been all over the world, but always in Western countries, even Hawaii was Western country. And going to Thailand, I fell in love with the place immediately and it was different. Right. And I spent a couple of years enjoying myself there. And then when I was least expecting it, um, met the love of my life, my partner Katai. So tell and me about so tell me about Thailand. What 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 attracts you? What what's the magnetism for you, apart from your beautiful wife Katai, but which we'll sure. get to in a minute. But what what's what really grabbed you as a Westerner going to Thailand that really stuck in your heart? That's a great question. Um, I've thought about this a lot, um, particularly when I came back to Australia for a purpose I'll talk about later. Mm. It's their courtesy was extraordinary, their politeness and courtesy. Um, they had democratic elections and then they had a coup and the energy, well, they were going to have, dem and then the energy just dropped. It was right. like everything calmed down. I went, hold on, that's not supposed to be a bad thing or something. <laughs> and and then I realized through Katai and getting to know particularly the rural people mm. that the difference is in the West, our focus always boils down to business. Right. And that's not a bad thing. It's just sure. What we do, even mm -hmm. religions become businesses, and you know, relationships become you know, business. Yep, whatever. In Thailand, the basis is totally different. Right. It's fa it's family first, but you know, the mafia has firm family first. The <laughs> Italians do, but it's totally linked. It's family first and spirituality. Right. And business is sort of something you do as well. So the people right. are really holistic. They're really, they're focused on mum and dad, but also children. It's the whole community of family. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, but the elders are held, held with incredible respect. They're never farmed out to other right. people. Yep. Um, the children love the elders, the family, but it's deeper than that because because spirituality, it, it is their spirituality. Mm. Even the monks are people who leave the family and then they're brought back as focuses for the family spirituality because they're busy dealing with family business. Right. It's, it's, until you experience it, I came back to Australia and I hadn't had much to do with my brothers and sisters for 30 or 40 years. And in two one-hour phone calls, I resolved everything with my brothers and sisters. Wow. Because and I understood how powerful family is. Yeah. And, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very visceral experience, but it, it really changes you. Right. So tell me about this wonderful lady. Tell me about Katai. <laughs> oh, my God. Um I looked into her eyes, fell in love with her immediately. Okay. Uh, it, it was, and I, there were many other women in the room. Right. It was just, it wasn't like, oh, there I was alone and someone walked in and captured my attention. I mean, she grabbed me. Look, she is, her education is primary school mm -hmm. and rice fields. Right. Right. She's one of the wisest women I've ever met. Uh huh. That's that's her parents. Yep. She um she loves her parents incredibly. Mm. Um her birthday is an event where she celebrates them and thanks them for giving birth. But she's got the smarts of a CEO of a right. top woman entrepreneur in the West. Right. Right. But it's totally natural. Yep. And um, that's our, my stepchildren uh, okay. and uh, the older boy's uh, fiance. Okay. Uh, they live together. They work together. They, they work as one. 
Right. And yet they're completely independent. It, it's it's extraordinary. But this woman was a woman. I've been married twice uh-huh. and had two long-term relationships. Yeah, that's our stepdaughter in the blue. Right. Um, she's only 16, but she looks, you know, 10 years older. <laughs> Don't tell a Western woman that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she um, she's incredibly smart. Right. Top 97, you know, top 3% of every class she ever goes into yep. comes out of a rural environment. I think the point is, and you'll see this throughout the whole thing, that these are people growing up in a rural environment who are as clever, sophisticated, uh, human, Mm -hmm. humane, caring as anybody brought up at Harvard or Yale or, you know, in the most sophisticated um, Western civilization. They've got the same potential as we do. So, and, so how did you how did you meet Katai in the first place? It it was literally across <laughs> across the room, but I mean, is there a yeah. is there a background well, story to that meeting? Yeah, I'll I'll keep it short and sweet. <laughs> we met in a place called Heaven, so we think we say it's a match made in Heaven. Okay, all right. No, I I went out socialising um, when I was in an extremely relaxed state. Right. I was just enjoying my time in Thailand. Yep. Yep. I had no agenda. I just went out. I saw something on TV. I said, this would be an interesting place to go and visit. Went there, and there she was, and my whole life changed. So what, what does Katai do in Thailand? What's what's her – she has a business or she works for someone else? Or what, what's, her, what's her, her life mission, I suppose you could say? Well – it starts with taking care of her children and her parents. Yep. And I put that together because the same energy goes into the children and the parents. Right. Right? Yep. She's at the age where the par- parents are older, the children are younger, and she's not just a mother but the CEO of the family. Right. Okay. It's quite profound how they take that responsibility on. Right. Now, when I met her, that was down south of Patea in a place called John Tien. Okay. And she was doing everything she could to get her children a, a proper education. She was working as a Herbalife distributor. She had a shop that they talked her into running, which was in front of a gym, but was in terrible, you know, location, location, mm-hmm. location yes. In business. Yes. But she was doing everything she could. Now, I got her out of that because it was a lot of work and not really paying, and I was able to help a lot at that stage because I had a lot of clients all around the world. Mm -hmm. And then we went back to meet the parents, and that was life-changing again. (laughs) Because the first thing they do in Thailand in the rural area, you go to visit, They take you to the temples. Right. Okay. That happened twice. Uh, This second time with risk, they take you to the most sacred places around, and that's your first day introduction to the family. Right. That's why I said family and spirituality are all connected. And they they don't explain why. They don't do it. They just take you there. Right. And you get exposed to the energy of the place. Yep. And that is meant to expose you to what the foundation of the family is they don't explain any of this they just do it right okay and if you go oh this is horrible you know they whatever but i loved it both times it happened right um now what happened is we were cruising along for three years and i was taking care but i was living a western lifestyle in a condominium right and katai was very polite about it but since then, I found out she didn't think it was good for her or for me. And right. she turned out to be right. I had a lovely condominium. Anyone would pay a fortune for it here. Um, but I had two seizures out of the blue, one in the middle of a consultation. Wow. Didn't know what had caused that. And then the second one was um, a couple of months later. I just got over it and went, gee, that was funny. 
And um, then I had one where I just blanked out for 60 minutes, just from scratch. And and so th is that why you're, you are back in Australia now? Well, I ended up with a blue uh, left toe on my big thing and they said something's wrong. So I came back to Australia to get it all checked out. Right. And that was it would have been around, what, about COVID time almost? Just before. Oh, no. Right. So, you, uh, so you've you been stuck well, here ever since. Well, basically, they found I had a blocked artery in the left leg. Right. Nothing wrong with my brain. They did everything, checked everything out. Well, that's uh, good. But, but uh, we think it was triggered by the blocked artery in the left leg. Okay. And they did a bypass. I've got a scar to die for for it. You know, very impressive. You'll have but to show me next worked. time. <laughs> yeah, well, down here. So, but it worked. Yep. And I recovered and I was just getting good. And guess what hit? COVID. Right. So we just celebrated my third year apart from Katai. So, uh, so what were you doing with Katai back in Thailand prior to you having to come back to Australia? I mean, what, what, where, where do you live in Thailand or what part of Thailand and what, what were you doing over there? Well, I was doing, um, we were living just south of Pattaya, mm -hmm. which is two hours south of Bangkok in a place called Jom Tien, in yep. a condominium. And Katai would come and visit me there, and I was living in my condominium, and then she'd go and take care of the children right. who were going to school 50 miles away or 50 k's away. Right. And then she'd go and visit her parents up in Lomsak in Pechibun. And we were just having a come-and-go relationship for three years. Right. And, you know, because... I thought I was well set up. Plus, I had clients around the world consulting, mm -hmm. you know, advising them on everything from their business to their lives to their, you know, everything you can do with numerology, astrology, the Enneagram, human design, and, and a whole bunch of things you wouldn't even imagine you could use those for. Right. And I was pulling in a pretty good income. Right. But it was starting to fade out because a lot of people were getting on the internet. Uh -huh. And now it's just every man and his dogs on the internet doing that. And I was, in a sense, covering expenses. Right. The tide was working as well, but, you know, I was bringing in the majority. Yep. And then I suddenly disappeared and came back here and then COVID hit. Yep. And then COVID hit Thailand particularly rural Thailand, much more strongly than um, than it did here in Australia, even though we got locked down. And yep. that was inconvenient. What happened is they got isolated and their income sources just dried up. Right. So like tell, me, tell, me, tell me about this place yeah, called Lom Sak. What, what's, what's the well, magic about that place? <laughs> it's... It's in a province called Pechibun. Okay. Pechibun is called the Switzerland of Thailand. Okay. And Pechibun means diamond mountain. Okay. And it's one of these undiscovered treasures of Thailand. Maybe the Chinese know more about it than the Westerners. <laughs> but it's sort of in the middle between Chiang Mai's up north. It's about... 650 k's north of Bangkok directly. Mm -hmm. um, Lomsak is probably the second biggest town in Pechibun State Province. Right. Um, it's small. It's got the most spectacular temple close by. Right. It's something that looks like Salvador Dali and a Buddhist monk put it together. You've got <laughs> some think... photographs of it there. Yeah, I think um, we'll have a look at that shortly. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see it. It's just mind blowing, and that's only a little bit of it in the photos. Right. Um, but this is where it's in a valley between two national parks, but a right. big, wide valley. It's prime rice growing land, and Katai's parents live in the middle of that, and they own land in the hills next door. Yeah, that's. Right. One part of the temple, that's about 
15 stories high. That's a massive Buddha. Wow. Look at the size of that. It is huge. And that's only one part of it. The rest of the temple is mosaic. Yeah, that gives that, you a sense. There's a bit of, bit of scale into it. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a whole chunk of the temple there that's mosaics of crystals and uh, and mosaics that is just unbelievable artwork everywhere right. you look. It, right. It's, you know, when people come there, we're going to take them to the temple and make friends with the monks. And it, it's it's a one in a – there's nothing like it even in Thailand. Right. Right. So – but Lomsak is rural. Right. It's matriarchal. Uh-huh. And the women <laughs> – the men are treated really well, but the women, in a sense, women rule without any feminism. It's just the women run the place. Right. Right. Okay. Um, um, and it's beautiful, but it's so gentle. Right. You know, as a guy, you don't feel the slightest bit threatened or anything. Right. You know, um, in fact, you feel empowered. Right. And... Katai's parents owned some land mm -hmm. up in the um, the hills. Oh, yes, that's one of her cousins who's a famous healer. Right. Named Bao. Yep. Uh, she had hundreds of clients. Right. Let me just talk about Bao for a moment. Yeah, please. She had hundreds of clients a month from all over Thailand. And when COVID hit, they went down to about zero. One or zero. Wow. So her income just was cut out from underneath her. A lot of the rural families, their children used to go and work in the city. Right. And send back money. That all dried up. Right. Right. So all of a sudden they went from having a lot of re tons of resources and tons mm. of knowledge about organic and regenerative farming. They're experts in it. Right. But they had no money, right. or very little. So yep. they were struggling to get any sort of medical attention, anything, just right. food on the table. I'm back in Thailand. Yep. This is a little autistic girl who's got the most unbelievable energy in her presence. And everyone treats her like a normal member of the community. As you were alluding to before, you know, the strength of the community, it's all inclusive, isn't it? I mean, yeah, I mean, we've just seen, you know, people around the tables eating and, and here we are. I mean, this is, I think this is a picture of Katai, is it not, with her mother and father? Yeah, that's Katai's birthday. She right. gives them money and thanks them for giving birth to her and they bless her. Right. And and this is you and Katai. I think this is another one of these... That's yeah, that's when the first day I went up to Lom Suk, they <laughs> drove me 120 k's to Pitsenlau, which has a gold Buddha. Right. And it's the most sacred Buddha in that part of Thailand. And that's my introduction to the family. <laughs> so you pass muster and, uh, and you're still involved in the family today. That's pretty good. Well, yeah, three years. This ain't some fling, you know, three <laughs> years zoom relationship three times a day working with the family paying their bills um raising money because what here's what katai came up with katai is a visionary mm -hmm. she wanted to start with her family mm -hmm. right that's what she wanted to do that's where they all start right and take care of the children give them an education give them the ability to take care of themselves in the future. Mm -hmm. Take care of the parents in their old age. Yep. So it starts there. But the family is extended. You know, there's probably 50 close family members. Okay. Wow. And, and then there's the people next door like Mai who, yep. you know, and everyone's included. Everyone takes care of everyone as best they can. Yep. And, then there's the community, the friends of the people. Right. So there's probably 150 people in that community, but they're out in the rural area. They're not living in a town. Right. Yep. And she just started going, 
take care of my children, take care of my parents. First thing she wants to do is grow her own organic rice and cook it naturally. They know the difference between food grown chemically versus food grown naturally. They're experts at it. It's just part of their culture. Right. So she wants to take care of the parents, take care of the children. Mm Mm-hmm. Then it extends to the community. So being a bit of a CEO by nature, she's a Leo for those who are into astrology, you know. Right, yep. She, being a a leader by nature, she started taking care of the people around as well. Yep. Um, You know, cousins, friends. um, And over the COVID period, this really exploded. Right. Um, There are people we can show later in the community who we've helped with colon cancer, help them save their land. But what started happening is Katai's parents invested in some land for the children. Right. She's one of three. One of them doesn't want to be part of the land. The other is a girl who's gay, dresses like a guy, and no one treats her as though she's any different than anybody. Right. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, it is. It's just none of the big dramas we have in the West sort of apply <laughs> out in rural Thailand. You you know, Mai's autistic. Oh, that's just Mai. You know, she's autistic. Yeah. So what? Yep. You know, just make sure she doesn't run in front of a car and she's included in everything. Yep. So is this, so, one, of the, this one of the pictures of the land that, that mum yeah, and dad Yeah, this is the land. Yeah, yep. thanks. Thanks for focusing this, Charles. I appreciate <laughs> all, that. Oh, good, my friend. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, early on. This right. is a shot of the land that we own up in the hills on the side of the valley. Right. It's brand new land and it's much bigger than that photograph. But uh, Katai's parents own it. Yeah, there, there's the yep. road running along it. Mm-hmm. There's a waterfall nearby and there's about 3.2 acres of land there, about right. three acres, right? And Way before I came across EcoForce and what you're involved with, three years ago, Katai planted 70 sweet tamarind trees. Right. These are very unique tamarinds. Yep. And 60 of them got through the dry spell. Now there's quite a bit of rain and yep. we got a well drilled so we can take care of them. So we're growing our own forest on our own land. How good is that? It's it's extraordinary, and she's very clear that we need. That's a tamarind tree that's about yep. two years old. Yep, that's, it's going to grow to forty, sixty feet. Wow! And you know, produce and a cash crop, but it'll be as good as a forest tree in terms of shade. Thirty foot wide shade. Yep. Yeah, they're the tamarinds. They're the first tamarinds we got. Right. Next year we'll have a bumper crop, and she's also putting in pumpkins, vegetables, flowers, okay. bamboo, mangoes, you name it. She knows right. how to do diversity. And then her friends, who desperately needed money because of the COVID situation, and actually one friend originally came to her and said, I want to sell our land to take care of the family, but I wanted to go to Katai because I love Katai. Right. And that's the next photo. Right. It, oh, that's the rice this fields. Is, yep. This one here. This one is prime rice growing land. You can grow two to three crops every year, organic rice, and there's a dam just up the valley that will feed that all all year long. Wow. And she's selling it to us at roughly half the price that it would be on the market. And we're about halfway through paying for that land. Right. So, and then the next photo, Mm -hmm. um, a cousin has land at the back of her parents' place, which is great for rice and vegetables. And her cousin's son, who's worked all his life in the rice fields, he's 42, got colon cancer and was extremely sick. Right. She wanted to sell it to us because it would add to the parents' house. Yep. And it would pay for him going to hospital. Right. Now, 
we're about halfway through paying for that, but it saved Lem's life. Right. Yep. It, In he, fact, I think we, got the, we've got a photo it, him, of him here, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yep, there he is. There he is. Yep. That was him on a good day. Right. Now, um, he, because we paid for half the land and we're working on paying for the rest, um, Lem was able to get his colon operated on and he's now alive and good. Oh, what a great story. Yeah. It, it, it just the community aspect of what Katai is doing there with her family and her community and brothers and relatives and it's just it's inspiring isn't it well this is what i realized was happening katai was extending she was becoming like a community leader mm -hmm. and people were selling her land and i said if we bought this land well she said this to me and i agreed mm. we could grow what we grow up in the hills and rice which is their staple Yep. and vegetables, and then make it available to the community. In fact, when we buy it off my Sue, who's the lady with the sun, mm -hmm. and Ecor with the rice land, we're going to get their families back involved with the land so they can take what they need for their family. Yep. But at the same time, we start weaving the community together and we make the community self-sustaining. Yeah, And not only can they make money, if money suddenly tanked around the world, they'd be able to live off what they already have. Yeah. So now, really, they, yeah, go on. Go, no, 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 you no, go. Okay. They've got the people mm -hmm. who want to work, the land, the resources, the expertise, everything you can imagine they've got. The one thing they lack because of our system in the world at the moment is the money to do it. Right. Now they're willing to work for it, but at 300 baht a day, which is mm. about $10 a day, right? They mm. don't get very far. Right. Now what I can do is I can bring the Western business expertise and, you know, my ability to make money, I can contribute to them. Yep. Now, exactly. because of that, I've won their trust because I've helped a lot of people out with the money. Yep. But also because my intention as soon as I go back there is to marry Katai legally together and everything. And I'm going to live there for the rest of my life. I'll right. travel the world, but I'll live there. Yep. And they've already given me a Thai name. I've won their trust. And they call me Thai. Now, Thai means free, free people. Okay. So Thailand is the land of the free free people. Right. And I call it the home of the courteous or the polite. <laughs> <Right>. no, <it's, laughs> well, it seems very true. I'm looking forward to meeting Katai in, in due course and, uh, and some of her family. Now, tell me, so you have a company, is that right, called the Excalibur Institute? Is that right? Yeah, I... Well, we've put it together in the last three years because, yeah, that's uh, one of the logos. Yep. And I've got 40, 50 years of incredible experience on the cutting edge of consciousness and applying it in the real world mm -hmm. experience, you know, not only creating my own unique techniques, but working with some of the top people all around the world. Right. Right, you know, studying under them, sometimes working with them. Mm -hmm. You know, you name someone who's mm -hmm. in the alternative scene who's still, you know, respected, and I, I would have known them, worked with them, done something around Fabulous. them. So you're using this business as a way of being able to bring support to Katai and her community? Well, what we're doing is my consulting, I came to the conclusion in the last three years that, consulting the way I was doing it, like doing readings mm. was over, you know, I'm almost 74. It's like, no, that phase of my life's over. I'm more an elder and a mentor. Right. And I wanted to condense. I've written 15, 16 books, most of which haven't been published, but they're ready to, to go. 
So I've written that and I wanted to be available to be a mentor to people who've got great things going. Right. Right. Um, that's just the way my design works. I put energy into people who've got something happening mm -hmm. or have a dream. They're really committed to making it happen, not just talk about, think about, dream about, but not do anything with it. If right. you understand. So we decided to create the Excalibur Institute because Excalibur was a sword created with fairy magic by Merlin to empower mm -hmm. Arthur, give him the energy to not just become king, but to work with him as a king. He was the he was the king, and he and Guinevere and the knights and the ladies of the round and everybody involved created Camelot. Right. But, you know, Excalibur was his tool that right. he used. That we, and it was blessed to guarantee the owner's success. Right. So, so that's that w that in a sense symbolized my role and how I wanted to put it together. And then I wanted to work with other people all around the world. But but the money was going to go into creating sustainability in Thailand and then promoting that around the world. And this is where your company just <laughs> dropped out of the blue into my lap. But go ahead. Ask well, me I was just about to say, I, I think this is where our spirits have connected in terms of, you know, my passion to make real material mm -hmm. change to people's lives and the planet and, and your equal vision and, and equal passion and commitment. And uh, I suppose that's where, you know, we've met and where, you know, EcoForce Global becomes the, the partner or the conduit, I suppose, um, to make our relationship work in terms of you being an advocate of our network and, and what we're doing, benefiting not only you, but back to Katai and her whole family and whole community. Well, it took me a couple of weeks after you generously jumped in the car and drove down to see me. Um, I found out about you through contacts in America, found you were 45 minutes up the road from me in Australia. <laughs> uh, we, we had a chat on Zoom and you jumped in the car and spent the afternoon with me, which was very generous with your time and a, a great experience. But I thought, it was going to, I mean, what you do is you plant trees in farms all around the world, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct, absolutely. And and now kelp trees in the ocean. Exactly, yes. And educate people about the environment as well. So I thought, well, this will be free trees for the farm. And then Katai explained to me she was already three years ahead of the game. <laughs> so I went, ugh. And then I went, you know, this could be a great way to finance it because I did an experiment. I sent some quick messages out to friends yes. and got bombarded with phone, you know, phone calls back for the next two and a half days. Wow. And I went, wow, that was easy. I didn't have to not be myself or try and be some sort of crazy marketer. <laughs> and uh, I went, I woke up one morning and I said, this could, create income for the farm it it would give me an interest that's very grounded and down to earth mm -hmm. you know i had a dream a couple of days ago katai katai is my roots the mm -hmm. roots to my tree mm -hmm. i'm a trunk with a lot of leaves out in the world right <laughs> yep <laughs> But until I met Katai, I didn't have my roots in the ground. Right. I couldn't go deep, you know. Yep, yep, yep. Understand. So that's our relationship in a nutshell. It's it's really quite extraordinary. And um, I just went, you know what? This is another way because you're reaching, EcoForce is reaching, well, we are mm. reaching now 18 countries in 18 months and mm. going for more. This is a way I was going to film what happened in Thailand, and I still will. Yes. And how the community grows from scratch and re-establishes itself and becomes sustainable. 
we're going to do that with all filming. And that's why that's part of the Excalibur's work because we're going to get a place down south of Patea and get a studio there, and I'll be able to broadcast my work around the world. Great, but also, um, and you know, and also my income's flattened out over the last three years because of the COVID thing and everything else as well. But now it's ready to take off again. So we want to film that, uh, what happens up in Lom Suk, because I don't want to go in there and rescue them. Right. I just want to give them the money they need to get up and going. Yep. And we've figured out exactly how much that is. And then they're on your own feet now, you know, because they're totally, totally, Kate, these aren't poor, desperate people who are starving for a f- no. feed. They've, they've really been pushed to that level, but yep. they're totally capable of standing on their own two feet. So I suddenly realized eco force is another way of going into communities all around the globe and inspiring them to improve their environment, mm. generate income for themselves, get involved with people around the globe because it'll take them, they won't extract them from their community, but they'll m- mix with people of goodwill all around the world. Yes, yes. And that is going to help a lot of communities stand on their own. Yeah, farmers, um, people in the nurseries, NGOs, all the people that EcoForce works with mm. to take the simple thing of buying a tree and getting it planted and living for at least two years and being totally looked after and nurtured. It's that is exact match with what we're doing with human beings in Thailand. Yeah, wonderful. So, so you and I are working together at. at- with EcoForce Global, and this is the the website that obviously you are inviting people to participate in. And and really, um, it's a very simple process. We plant trees around the world. We support farmers in adopting regenerative agriculture, which is sustainable, chemical-free farming. And obviously, the the benefit of that is that the food that we all eat is good and nutritious for us. So there's so. For those who are watching this video, there's an opportunity for you to be part of Christopher's network, helping obviously plant trees around the world, but importantly, being able to sustain and support his family back in in Thailand, which I think is a, a wonderful a wonderful concept, a wonderful vision, and one that both he and I are working mutually on to make happen. But Christopher, there's another, um, I suppose, oh, call. Can, can I just say yeah, one sure. thing to do with that? Yeah, please. Katai, Katai is the roots of the tree. Mm-hmm. I'm the trunk and the leaves. Right. But what you're doing is the forest. And Katai had had that vision but didn't have the resources to reach out on a global level. But it says clearly in her astrology that that's part of her future. Right. Right. Not that it's forced on her, but she's got the capacity to be a global influencer. Yep. I've got the capacity to sort of in between, you know, to bring her out into the world. Yep. But you're a global player, Charles. What you're doing, I mean, your history with people, check out the website. Uh, Charles did some phenomenal stuff in the last nine years in Australia in um, a thing called Buy a Bale where he saved thousands of farmers and their cattle by getting people to ship uh, hay all around Australia to drought affected areas. Mm. And in the process, after a few years of, you know, just hobbling along, you know, with a great idea, raised a hundred million dollars to do that and is well known in Australia for doing it. Now he's taking it on a global level to the world. Now I know for each of us, we have our little story. Mm. This is me being Excalibur just for a moment. Sure. We have our little sco- story about our lives. We have our big story when we realize our true potential. And then there's the great work, mm. which is what we came as human beings on this planet to leave as a legacy. Mm. It's the work of you know, bringing humanity together in a much more conscious way, 
working with the planet rather than against it, yep. uh, working together rather than working against each other or killing each other, mm. and, you know, realising our potential as humanity. Mm. And even beyond that, there's a thing called the grand adventure, which right. is being a human being on this planet at this time in history. Wow. You know, <laughs> yeah. there's that. Now, yep. you're, you're, whether you believe it or see it in yourself or not, you're a highly expansive positive influence in that process. And I can speak for Charles as someone who has real integrity. You've seen what happened with FTX in the last couple mm. of weeks and that. Well, this is the opposite. This is someone who genuinely loves to help people, genuinely wants to improve the environment, has extended it now to kelp with people in America and people in Australia and education for people on not being a climate activist or a climate exploiter, but someone who brings people back in touch with the earth and the climate in mm. a healthy way so it enhances their life. So I can say that. And that all started for me with this beautiful woman whose eyes I fell in love with that moment down in heaven. <laughs> in <John Tien. laughs> Thank goodness it wasn't up in heaven. <laughs> no, no, I've, I've, the whole of my life has been very down to earth. <laughs> <laughs> so, Christopher, um, what's the next step for you then and, and Katai? And, um, I mean, I know that you and I are working, you know, to make EcoForce Global the big part of your going back to Thailand, but there are some opportunities for people to participate in supporting Katai and, and her family and her community. And maybe if you want to share a little bit of that with me, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, as far as Thailand's concerned, we have a budget. If mm -hmm. we had that budget today completely, um, if we had that amount of money, it, it's, it's not billions, but it's, you know, it's significant. Mm-hmm. Within three to six months, Katai would have the whole thing up and running in Thailand. Place for me to stay, everything. I'd be back in Thailand like that. Wow. Okay. And she has told me, don't come back until we've got everything together and I can really take care of you. Wow. How beautiful is that? It's like, well, don't come back here and get trapped. <laughs> you know, let's set it up. Yeah. Now, I want to spend time with them. But mm. she's not, she's going, look, you've taken care of us so well. I want to take care of you. Mm. That's part of our marriage bond. That's mm. the way they see it in Thailand. Now, there's three ways at the moment this can develop. And I want you to see it as if you're planting, if you're putting anything, Mm -hmm. Money or energy will come visit us. You know, by the way, Thai, Katai wants to turn the farm in the hills into a, a cultural immersion tourism place where people okay. can stay and hang out with the locals. I mean, she's yeah. she's a smart cookie, and it's a perfect place to do it. Mm. But if if you get involved with that, it's going to inspire people on a global level. We're yeah. already connecting with other people doing similar stuff. And we're not going to bring California to Costa Rica, which a lot of people I know have done. Right. We're going to bring French people and Australians and Americans and wherever, yep. you know, Africans and Chinese or whatever, to Thailand to experience Thai culture. Nice. Nice. Right? Now – I'm going to become part of that. You know, it's just part of my growth and development. So how you can help us three ways. If you get involved with helping Charles and me with EcoForce plant trees around the world and help farmers and the nurseries and everything involved, right, all the money that I make as an advocate will mm -hmm. go to Thailand. Yep. That's it, because that's that's my passion, that's my life. I'm, I'm going to benefit from it because I'll get well taken care of, but <laughs> it's going to go into the whole community. 
Absolutely. And I'll end up, like Katai will be the sort of community leader and I'll be the patron, I guess. There's two other ways. Um, Amy Falcon, a friend of mine who's working with me on the Excalibur Institute and also involved with um, EcoForce, she's created two... Um, Spot Fund Me, I think they're called, mm -hmm. or they're they like are. GoFundMe yep. pages. Yep. Here's yep. one of them. There's a picture of Katai at the back of her parents' house looking over one of the pieces of land we're going to buy. Right. And the first one is about we're halfway through paying off the land, but we need another 13000 to pay out the two pieces, the two extra pieces of land. Right. And that will really help a bunch of families there as well get yep. themselves out of financial debt. Yep. And they'll be included in that land as well. And the other the other thing is Amy's plan, and it's a good one, is to make sure all expenses, weekly expenses, monthly expenses, you know, sending the kids to school, getting my eldest stepson, he's learning to become a mechanic, paying right. for food, taking care of the family, the kids, all the, all the weekly expenses and the monthly expenses are covered for the next six months. So everyone can breathe because yep. we're being get it, we're just being getting by by the skin of our teeth, particularly in October. Um, we've been just getting by with every penny we can raise and every mm. penny I had. But now we want to give ourselves six months. So we can really focus on fundraising and getting the farm and the community back up and going. So there's two links to do with that. So yep. at the end of this video, you'll find a link to EcoForce, a link to the two spot, whatever they are. Yep, spot funds. Um, spot funds. And if you don't want to do get involved with trees, but you want to give, go to the spot funds. If you want to get involved with something that's, going to really help us in Thailand but contribute on a global level, mm. then I would put – I'd highly recommend EcoFund. It's totally accountable. You'll know exactly what's going on with your trees. Um, so it's totally legit and it will help us all. And what we're looking at is that we weave everything of what we do in Thailand and what we do with EcoForce into – a seamless helping of communities around the world mm. so that it becomes bigger than just the trees. You know, it, it starts really helping the human beings as well as create amazing environments. Yeah. I think, Christopher, one of the things that really inspires me to work with you and make these things happen for Katai and her community is just your unending drive to see the quality of their lives improved by what you as a human can do. And I think collectively, all of the people who that you come in contact with and Amy, and I know the people I talk to about what you're doing and back in, in Thailand with Katai are really inspired by the story. And I think what you've given people here is an opportunity to make a real difference. They can be part of your advocate team and, and advocate not only for the planet, but farmers and, and regenerative agriculture, but if they wish to make a direct contribution directly to Katai for her and for her community, then I think that's there are also great uh, opportunities for people to give and support. So thanks for those. Well, They're great. Let, let me just say one last thing. It just occurred to me as you were speaking. What I got from Katai is more than just a partner. Mm. And maybe we'll post below the video, her vision as she wrote it, you'll feel her heart. Mm. I got more than, you know, someone to sleep with, a partner, a family, and a community. Yeah. But she, and this is what's in it for you, apart from what you do for the planet. Mm. She taught me generosity and gratitude. And I've put Every, not every cent, I've, I take good care of myself because mm -hmm. at my age I need to and Katai insists yep. that I do. But I've put everything else into this and I have got so 
much back in return. I, I joked to Charles or Amy a couple of days ago and said, you know, EcoForce and Katai and Thailand, I've got my mojo back. <laughs> At 74, you know, I, I feel I've got the energy of a kid. I got the experience of an adult and the wisdom of an elder and great people to spend the rest of my life with, including you, Charles. So it's a great combination, isn't it? It's, it's a great, it's a great map for the future. Yeah. This is what human beings are capable of. Yeah. And I think that I suppose, and maybe we'll finish up on this moment is uh, this thought is that really our planet is all about people coming together. It's about people interacting. Um, you and I are doing this across Zoom, but we've spent time together and we'll spend more time together. But it's spending time in the in Thailand, with Katai, in the community, understanding what they're all about. It's that that then educates us about how others live. And when we are together with people, whether it be having a cup of coffee or having a meal, um, we really are, we, we grow as people. Um, we can't do it digitally, you know. Um, there's nothing better than giving someone a man hug or giving someone a kiss or just listening to their challenges in life or just digging a hole beside Katai to plant the next tree, you know. Just there, be there to experience that day, that moment in time when it happened. And and you'll never forget it, unless, of course, you get Alzheimer's, but we won't get that. <laughs> but you know, but I, I think that's really the opportunity now in, in life is to actually be together with people. And, and that's, uh, that's what really changed my life when I met so many farmers who were going through really tough times in drought. And I suppose, and, and I know right now, when I talk to people like you and Amy and Ryan and a whole bunch of people in other parts around the world, we're touching families, we're touching people, we're touching the land. And, uh, and that's powerful contribution to humanity. Absolutely. Couldn't yep. agree more. Thanks, Charles. So, Christopher, thanks for thanks for uh, spending the uh, the hour with me. It's been great to learn more about you. Every time I talk to you, I learn more about you. There's just a little nugget every single time. So, uh, I hope everybody watches and uh, enjoys our conversation. And if you'd like to be part of the EcoForce Global Network with Christopher and myself, come on board. But uh, if you'd like to also support Katai and her community and her family, then we'd love you to uh, click on the links below this video on YouTube and uh, and support. So thank you, Christopher. Have a wonderful, uh, wonderful evening. Yep. Well, sun's going down. And um, this has been a beautiful way to spend an evening with you, Charles. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Christopher. It's uh, one of the joys of life is meeting wonderful people. All right. Yep. Have a great weekend. Talk to you Same soon. Same to you, mate. Bye-bye.